What's up, guys? Let me get this mic plugged in here. Let's make a. There we go. Microphone is plugged in. What is up, guys? We're here. It's midday. It is Bateman uh, midday? Uh, <clears throat> let me fix the audio here. Hopefully, this will sound better. So, anyway, so uh, I'm sorry I didn't stream Saturday night. Uh, I was with the family. And uh, I went fishing all day Saturday. And I was really tired, and Bateman Jr. and I got to watching a dirt race, and I fell asleep, uh, which is okay because, to be honest, I was waiting on some six cents frogs, and they didn't get here. Uh, they actually got delivered on a Sunday, which is really weird, uh, but uh, they're here. I just got a couple, and I got a whole bunch of new stuff from six cents on the way. Probably gonna be here uh, tomorrow and through the week. Uh, some new shirts, more Vega frogs. Uh, who knows? Uh, so that's coming. Got some stuff from the hookup tackle. So I planned on doing a frog show, and that'll probably happen Saturday. So uh, make sure you smash the video, uh, hit the like button, uh, and if you're new, subscribe. So I'm gonna try to do this uh, as much as I can. Uh, if you guys like the midday live stream, that way you can watch in the evening, even though it's not live. If you can join me, great. And I'll still do the Saturday night live where I'll really kind of pin down a subject and, and we'll talk about it and you know if I got Friday nights off and stuff like that um, but everybody's wanting content this is the easiest way for me to bring you content so the days I don't upload any content whether it's Bateman Raw uh, short videos um, stuff like that I'll, I'll try to live stream and I think about 11 o'clock is good because that's lunchtime on the East Coast it's a little before uh, lunchtime there and the West Coast guys you can watch it at lunch you know, we'll do a stream for about an hour. So uh, let me bring up YouTube, see if I can even see any comments, if there's even anybody watching. If there's not, I don't blame you. Uh, Bateman Jr. is not here. He's he's, he's asleep. Uh, little dude is sleeping like a champ. So uh, do me a favor. Make sure you share the video, whatnot. I'm going to post this on my Facebook page right now, and then I'll get to uh, answer some comments and whatnot. But what we got to do is we got to give away that Bateman box. And fixing to do drawing for that I'm gonna have to do it by myself uh, Bakeman jr. again he usually does his drawings but he's asleep I don't want to wake him up so give me a second to get this shared up over on Facebook uh, let me know uh, did y'all catch any fish this weekend believe it or not I did I uh, got a chance to really throw the new six cents catwalk um, I caught a pretty good one on it got it on GoPro uh, and then I had one blow a six inch dogma like five feet in the air. I don't know how I didn't hook up with this fish, but it was tough, but they were definitely actually kind of biting. So this over here on my YouTube page or Facebook page sometimes it, it doesn't show up but uh, we got it now uh, now let's see let's see this chat here what's up drummer Troy G Rich Jones Tim Adams that's some new names I haven't seen uh, what's up Chuck Midwest fisherman uh, caught a bunch of dinks Friday dude I'm always catching some dinks um, had a turn on the California Delta 106 with massive thunder and lightning holy cow 106. Uh, that's why I like my pool. I definitely got in that pool right after um, I did some fishing myself. But uh, it's actually nice to be here in midday. I can open that door and the bugs aren't really flying in a whole lot. The light's actually pretty good because they got some good natural light from the side coming in. Um, yeah, so let's do this thing. Let me uh, get start with this drawing here. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to draw... Uh, someone from YouTube and then I will draw someone from the Instagram posts Put them together and I'll draw it out of my hat. So you're gonna see my bald head for a little bit. What's up Eric Filburn? I am doing great, man. Uh, I hope you're doing well is um, Great question Lunkers and Lures. So the fall shad bite is happening right now So what we've got we've got a ton of what they call emerald shiners and there's tons and tons of these little bitty minnows are about this this long in the gizzard shad and the skipjack, which is a herring-based uh, fish, are feeding on them. And 
these fish I caught on top water were midday, two, three o'clock, and they're all basically what's happened is these emerald shiners have really pushed in the backs or three quarters backs in the bays, and the gizzards have followed them up onto these shallow flats. And these bass are in 18 inches to two foot of water, and they're just waiting for these individual gizzard shad or a thread fin to roll by, and they're just crushing them. So, um, Gizzards may be filter feeders, but man, I'm telling you, they're mixed in with these little bitty emerald shiners. I don't know if they're being chased by other fish, which is very possible, but they're definitely mixed in. But the skipjack were all about these uh, emerald shiners. Uh, I only know what I snagged on a rattle trap, and it was definitely a gizzard. Uh, but, um, you know, people say Asian carp are filter feeders. You can catch them on a red eye shad. So, uh, and that's a fact. I've got that on video, but. Um, What's up, Frank? I'm telling you, it's time for the repo, man. Uh, so that's what we call fish on the top water. I thought of you as a man. I wish I had a repo man for a little bit. But uh, let's get this drawn away. Uh, then we'll, we'll, we'll get some talk. So I got this comment picker pulled up on my phone right now. I've already got uh, the YouTube URL in here, I believe. And we're going to get the comments I figure it'd be better on my phone than uh, trying to do it through the stream program 68 unique comments so I appreciate that uh, let's pick somebody that will be in the final drawing and be one of two people so let's start the raffle and pick a random winner here it goes Eric Riley his comment enjoyed the show man i always like those positive comments so uh eric i'm gonna write your name down in here i don't know if you're in in here or not that's okay give me a little piece of paper uh frank yes i did see that shower blow and i would like it really bad that is a jdm color um let's fold this up nice and neat that's a jdm color looks really good matter of fact i bought a shower blow this morning i bought a bone sb125 All right, let's see if I can adjust the audio a little bit. Maybe I gotta talk closer to my mic. Uh, let's see here. A volume range. We don't want no noise suppression, all that stuff. System sound, no. Audio preview, no. I gotta figure out how to, I can adjust the volume on this microphone. Um, but we'll, we'll work on that. Let's see here. Let's see if that works. No, that mutes it. We don't want to mute nothing. Uh, microphone, mono mix, average left to right, check, check, check. Maybe that's better. I don't know. Y'all tell me if that audio sounds any better for you. If it's not, I have not tried a jackal brake blade. I'd like to. Um, it sounds like a, 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 it's a really good bait. From what Alex Davis tells me, got to got to crank it all the way up, oh, man. You know I've noticed that on some uploads and stuff that afterwards it's definitely not as loud. So uh, I don't know what the issue there is. I'd love to be able to fix it. Thanks Midwest Fishermen for signing up to my Instagram account. Uh, appreciate that. Um, all right. So we got one winner. Now we got we got to pick a, a winner from the Instagram account. So I'll get in here and uh, Instagram tools, Instagram random comment picker. Well, I did have a guy on a video tell me I had the worst video quality of anything on YouTube, and I find that very hard to believe because this is actually broadcasting in HD. Uh, is it like crystal clear uh, HD? No. Uh, but my DSLR is really good at uh, HD, but I'm gonna pick me up some new camera equipment um, I've been working on a show with Mark Menendez, and I'll show you guys a preview of it Saturday uh, And you guys can tell me what you think of my camera skills um, Anyone that knows me uh, Knows I used to film for a living and, and tell you first episode of Mark's TV show is looking good. So Let's get this Instagram um, 
contest winner here's uh, don't want to do that we got to pick the photo yeah who wants to win yep that's the one so we're going to get the comments on the Instagram there was 43 unique commenters and let's pick a random winner we're going we're going we're going John W Clay and he tagged him two buddies on there so that was the the deal so let me get John get him a little piece of paper here and uh, the good thing about the video is if I uh, I always can something happen to my mic is it better or worse tell me better or worse so I can get the bugs fixed out. Uh, settings. Mic's good. Okay. Sounds good. Worse. All right. All right, it should be back to the regular, regular season. So if it sounds good, Terry, all you gotta do is get someone on Instagram. It could be you, your buddy. I, I don't care. But all right, didn't notice any change. That's good. I'm gonna get a new mic. This, I mean, I'm due for one. So, all right, here we go. This hair is this hair is bad. So I'm doing good, Phil. Man, what's up, dude? All right, so we're gonna draw here. I'm gonna close my eyes, mix this thing around, shuffle it up pretty good. I'm not gonna look. I'm gonna grab one. And this will be our winner. Mr. Eric Riley from YouTube has won the Bateman bots. Um, so Eric, uh, appreciate it. Uh, somehow get a hold to me. I'll comment on the video. Uh, as well, and I'll ship you out the, the summer edition Bateman box. So, let you guys know once these six cents frogs get here, yes, I'm going to give some away, and uh, I'm really excited. But I'll go ahead and show you what a couple of them look like. This is the, the production model, this is the Vega frog. Really excited about this. So, this color is Sneaky Ghost. Yes, I hope nobody gets gets fired. So there's Sneaky Ghost. It's kind of a, a translucent pearl white. So if you like some white frogs, man, this is kind of the white way to go. Uh, if you want to mimic some shad. Got a little bit of a green hue to it, man. Really, really like that. That's it, Midwest Fisherman. That's my Instagram, Baxter the Bait Man. I try to keep it simple. Um, if you notice, man, how it's killed, it's real narrow. It's kind of got a cup of mouth. A really good walking frog. Uh, you see this weight here? It really helps it cast. And it also keeps that hold up so water doesn't get in the frog. But it does have a little bitty spot down here. Very narrow. Um, very narrow. Uh, it's going to walk better. Audio sucks. God, what, I wonder why my audio... If, if the audio is fine on a lot of people's end and it's really kind of decent on my end after I upload I wonder if it's an internet connection issue um, I don't know but it does have long tails and a lot of companies put the longer tails that way you can trim it up if you put really short ones you can't trim it so I'd rather go a little bit longer um, but again I'm gonna fix I'm gonna try to get the audio fixed um, get a better mic uh, Obviously, Luke Duncan's got a lot cooler mic system. Now, this is a cheap $70 mic, but it's a lot better than before. I mean, anybody that's been following me for a long time, uh, Colonel Reb probably watched me on Facebook back in the day. It was just a cell phone. So the audio and the video was pretty rough. But um, anyway, that I got that color. Uh, these are super soft, too. But I really like how those hooks are kind of pointed upwards, and they're close enough 
uh, around the body. They kind of wrap around. You're going to get some good hookups on this frog. So uh, it sits. I won't say it sits flat. It kind of sits about that angle right there. Um, is this going to be a really good mat fishing frog? I'm not sure with the cup mouth, but shallow grass around cover, uh, it skips really well. My prototype skipped really, really well. Who's going to be the next guest on Raw? Well, I've got Joe Thomas one. Uh, that's a question I'd like to ask you guys. Who would you like to see on Bateman Raw? Uh, I can reach out to some people. Uh, I was going to say possibly Mark Zona. He told me he would do it, uh, but they got to... Um, um, Bass has kind of got to slow down. Uh, or I could get Ronnie Moore. Um, definitely not getting Roland Martin. Dude, I, I, I love Mike's Tackle World. I need to go back. Well, maybe I should uh, move my mic a little bit closer. I just don't like the mic in the shot. I don't want to look like I'm Linda Lovelace with the big you know, microphone right near my mouth all the time. What's up, Darius King? I can get a uh, little Bill Schroeder would, would do it uh, eventually. So Eric is going to come on this fall. Uh, I've been talking to him. He's just been freaking um, going crazy uh, fishing tournaments. So. I do like Bill Dance. Bill Dance is a great guy. Uh, Cole and Jay. Uh, Cole said he'd do it. So that was actually who I wanted to reach out to. Uh, Cole's kind of a tackle hoarder himself, and uh, it'd make for good content because we can talk about all kinds of stuff, not just fishing. Uh, someone just mentioned Randy Blockett, so I'm going to put it out this way. Uh, Randy Blockett put out a video of how electronics should be banned uh, from fishing and uh, all this stuff. All right, so... I'm not going to bash Randy as a person. He's obviously a better fisherman than I am, or ever was. He's had his day. Um, he wants some money. I kind of agree with his premise of electronics are really expensive. Let's just be honest. This cell phone costs uh, brand new. This is just an iPhone, whatever. It's probably about 500 bucks new. My laptop was 800 It does a whole lot more stuff than a depth finder. Why are... Why is a HDS 12 cost $3,000? I can't, well, maybe I could stream live from it, but um, let's just be honest. I think a cell phone laptop is way more powerful than a depth finder for a quarter of the price. So I would like to see the prices come down. That's about the only thing I agree with. Him. Never, and, and, you know, for a vintage cool factor to have a no electronics tournament and GPS, yeah, that's cool. I'd, I'd like to see that. It's never going to happen at a professional level. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you got $10,000 electronics or $100 electronics. You still got to catch fish. Okay? Uh, John Cox is kind of proving that. And, it's, and there's this huge myth that John Cox just sticks his pole in the water and that's his depth finder. He has a depth finder. But, again, he knows his bread and butter is fishing basically less than 10 feet deep all year. You know? He's not going to ledge fish. He's not going to get offshore. He's not going to drop shot smallmouth. But I guarantee you, he's going to use his electronics if he has to, if he has to go fish Lake St. Clair and try to catch some fish. I mean, I agree with the, the premise, but, uh, you know, here's the deal. Lawrence, Hummingbird, Garmin, Ray Marine all pump a lot of money into the fishing industry. Why would you go out there and basically bash them? And put in your and Randy sponsored by Lawrence and basically say, hey, look, your product's too expensive, uh, blah blah blah. Uh, we don't need all this stuff. It doesn't show who a good fisherman is. So, I personally feel like um, the same guys that are catching them now are going to catch them, whether you have ten thousand dollar electronics or a thousand dollars worth. And that's because the guys that are at the top of the game, the Jacob Wheelers and all that, they put in work, man. It's not just that easy to go scan a bass and go, well, I can catch it. Um, if it was that easy, guys like Brandon Hunter, uh, Jake Lawrence, uh, Ben Parker wouldn't get blown up all year long from guys that are fishing top-level events 
you know, the Costa series, the opens, even the tours. Hey, man, I need it. I, I need help with my graph. I, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, if it was that easy to just catch them. I mean, it, there's a science to using a depth finder. It's, you know, I'm not saying I'm great with them. Uh, does it help me catch more fish? I'll be honest. Yeah, I think uh, down scan side imaging help me find more fish. Do they help me catch more? Uh, I would say probably not. Live scope is really cool. Again, you got to understand how wide the beam is, how far it's going, what's actually fish, what's bait. Uh, Matt Robertson's the best I've seen on it yet. And obviously, you got to ma master it. So, lip snap. I'll answer uh, a few questions here. So, I'm not going to roast Randy. Uh, I just disagree on him with the whole. It is pay to play, but dude, let's be honest. The whole bass fishing tournament scene is legalized gambling. I mean, I'm located uh, about ten minutes from Kentucky Lake, Steve Parker, right here on the north end. But you know, bass fishing, legalized gambling, and fishing tournaments, and that's why I've never understood. In Kentucky, you can go pay a hundred dollars and fish a BFL, and it's a total uh, crapshoot. I guess it's skill based gambling, uh, whether you're going to get a check or not. You can roll, you can, but you cannot play Texas Hold'em, which is basically the same thing. So, I fish with no units and I catch them, but I fish shallow. I think for a shallow angler, uh, you don't have to have sophisticated depth finder. There are times when I do believe offshore, if you're fishing shallow offshore, like big flats, stump fields, uh, stuff like that, in that five to eight foot of water, it does make a huge difference when you're trying to fish away from the bank. Uh, if you're in the back of a creek or a pocket, I really only use my units for the mapping. You know, when I'm in a boat, if the right mapping to find the little ditches and, and just see where it may go from four to, you know, two foot and come back up. So it's all a skill. And I, I feel like Randy basically said, well, because you can use a depth finder, um, you're a spoiled brat. And I, I don't, I don't like that. You know, uh, Obviously, my buddy Zach Burge put a pretty unfiltered post on Facebook, and at the end of the day, you still got to catch them. LBLBFL used to be my way of giving Cole Floyd money for his tuition. Yeah, oh, Cole's a hammer. Trust me, I've donated to a lot of guys in the LBL division at one time. I said, you know what, I ain't doing this no more. Uh, I'm just fish buddy tournaments. I like the net fish. I got draws where I... The guys I was fishing weren't even catching them, so I didn't even get to net anything. So I like to learn, too. And you never know on those as a co-angler. You can draw a guy and learn some really cool stuff. So I, when I fished as a co-angler, I looked at it as a way to learn. So What's up, Michael? Man, you had the day off. I actually got off early about 3 o'clock this morning. Uh, so things were a little slow last night. Sometimes that happens. Uh, so I'm jacked up, drank me some NOS energy drink. Um... So I'm hoping to crash about one o'clock and just go to sleep. So, so the other color so we're talking about on the Vega Frog here from Six Cents. Uh, this one they sent me is called Brick Critter, uh, and it's kind of a brownish red. I really like a red frog, believe it or not. That's one of my favorite. But I really like this. Uh, I learned a little tip on that red frog from a few guys, but this is kind of a brown orange frog. Really, really. Uh, like that right there, uh, man. These are soft, but um, I love the I love the the, the tail. I believe it's uh it's kind of like a round living rubber, which is basically all frogs. But very good detail on this. Didn't go totally overboard. Um, I don't think the back color matters, but I like the brown bottom. Um, what I found out, especially during the spawn, those bass really don't like a red frog for whatever. So I think they got a reddish color. Cranking uh, Collie, it should be coming to me. Kirby Stevens, we caught the smallest five bass limit in history this past Sunday. You only did that, Kirby, because I wasn't fishing, because I always catch the smallest, I think. So, Yeah, I don't, I don't drink energy drinks that much. Uh, it's just that I got off early, and I was trying to keep myself from going back to bed, and I'd be up all day, so... Um, I actually, there, I drank one about a week ago. There's a turbocharged NOS that was whoo, 
They ain't doing that again. Just the regular ones, fine. But I don't drink the whole can. I drink half a can, and then I'll put it in the fridge, and I'll drink it the next day or something like that. Yes, they got some sneaky bright colors in the Vega Frog. Uh, there's one that's called Pickle Breath that Cole has been using from Cole and Jay. And he has got a video, and he mashes on them. Uh, but I like natural colors for the most part. Um, but, man, this one looks really good. I think they did a really good job uh, with the frogs. That's a good question. Do you think bass think floating frogs or frogs are bluegill? I would say they actually probably think it's, uh, you know, some sort of fish. Um, if you've ever seen some fish kind of die on the surface, uh, they have a net, some, like a bluegill. That's obviously you've got hooked it with a cricket or something like that and throw it back. It kind of gets on the surface and it just kind of goes back and forth and falls down. I don't know exactly what they think it is, but they don't like it. I know that. Now, on a mat, I think they think it's some kind of, you know, a mouse or small bird or something running across a mat, and they got to get it. So, Is the vicious frog any good? I bought a bunch of them. Have, it's not bad. For the money, it's not bad. So, No, I'm not a fan of coffee. Uh, if I want some diarrhea, I drink some coffee. But luckily, I haven't really wanted any diarrhea lately. All right, good question, Terry. Pettiford, are you seeing any shortage of baits in your area? Uh, yes. So our academy is wiped out. Some of the local shops, uh, I won't say they're wiped out, but you can tell they're thinning. Now, they all tell me um, it's hard getting stuff. And then the other part is, fortunately, uh, Kentucky Lake, uh, the tourism is down. Uh, everybody's hammered how bad it sucks here. And I don't want to sit here and say it sucks bad because I, I had a decent day Saturday. Um, but I really think uh, probably need to be more proactive in promoting the Kentucky Barkley Lakes area. There's still fish here to catch. Um, is it a la 2014, 2013, 25 pounds every five casts? No, you don't have to work for them. But uh, the fall shad bite is starting right now. Um, I'm seeing that uh, pretty well. Um, so it's usually really good in August and midday, and then late in the afternoon in september october once you start getting those mid 60 degree days really consistently and start getting some overcast and rain that's when that they would really migrate to the back um, yeah uh, I, i've been told to, and, and that's why I'm, i'll let you guys know to get the six cent stuff uh i'm not trying to be a product pusher but I'm trying to tell you guys to be urgent. If you like it and want to try it, you need to try to grab it now because with the way things are with COVID and stuff like that, don't know when more are coming. So I know Casey has struggled getting stuff in. Other companies, even Strike King, uh, Berkeley, once stuff kind of gets here, there's no timetable when it's going to come back in. Now, Strike King, a lot of their stuff's made in Costa Rica and they're soft plastic support in the United States. So that helps them out a lot compared to several other people that's not knocking those brands or anything so i agree darius so i use a frog on kentucky lake uh usually in the spring and i will in the fall and i actually have done really well with the frog around boat docks in the fall don't ask why i did it on accident several years ago and i caught a few and it seems like it's just something different they don't see when they get really really dirt shallow you can throw a frog way up there, and it's a lot more subtle sometimes. But, you know, I, um, I was throwing that catwalk and the dogma, and my buddy was throwing a jackal bow stick, and we were ha just launching these things way out there. Um, a frog takes a lot longer to bring in uh, than the normal walking bait, so... Yeah, man, I've seen all kinds of stuff. Um, you know, someone sent me a picture of Bass Pro Shops, Frog Isle, and there was like two frogs. Lunkers and Lure, the first frog bass I ever caught was on a Spro Bronze Eye. It's a tropical perch or something like that. Tropical white. And it come off rip rap and it was about a five pounder. And it absolutely scared me. It hit it so hard. What's up, Jerome? I was on the water in Michigan, got to meet Ben Nowak. He was drop showing. So what's your favorite bait to put on your hook? Well, if I was going to drop shot, and I don't do it often. 
Uh, I'm going to go Robo Worm. Unless I'm up north, I'm going to pay whatever kind of money I've got to to get some of those Berkeley flat nose worms. Justin Lucas has spanked everybody. That's all he throws. Everybody knows it. And they, the guys that use it, they can smoke them. Flat nose worms got to be your go to if you're going to St. Clair, Erie, any of those places up north. Uh, what do you recommend now at the end of summer for smaller waters without shad or herring movements? Ooh, that's a good question. I would still go uh, with your spinner baits, uh, your rattle traps. Just because you don't have shad doesn't mean they're not going to bite reaction baits. Uh, maybe change your colors up to some bluegill or some brighter chartreuse colors. Uh, but you know what's funny is a lot of ponds I fish don't have shad or gizzards, but they still eat spinner baits. They still eat rattle traps. Um, it's just a natural, a lot of times those fish are reacting to their lateral line. Um, but, you know, also deadly in the fall, man, is, is freaking wacky rigs, Cinco, stuff like that. Uh, those fish react to those soft plastics very well. And as colder it gets, uh, pitching a jig around grass and, and swim jigs and stuff like that are, are really good as well, so... My Academy has been out on owner hooks. It's glad I stocked up before they ran out. My Academy had them all on sale. I bought like a hundred dollars owner hooks for like forty bucks a, a month or two, well three months ago. Uh, I love owner hooks. I wish they carried more owner trebles. That's my only issue. I agree, Darius. Uh, there are less. I, I I don't know about less people on the lake, less bass fishermen. Have, have you seen all the freaking pontoon boats on Kentucky Lake? I need to be a pontoon dealer. Holy smokes. Pontoons with twin 250s, twin 200s. I've seen one with triple 200s out there. Whoa. I would like to get... I, I've talked to Ben. Ben will do Bateman Raw with me. I, I would love to pick his smallmouth brain. He's an excellent guy. Love Ben. Uh, his channel's very similar. Uh, more he's smallmouth focused. And why wouldn't he be? He lives in smallmouth territory and... Uh, if I get to where I can start traveling, I'm, I'm going to go make some videos with Ben. And he can whip me smallmouth fishing. So, Floating jig head on a drop, drop shot rig. Whoa. What's up, Justin Royal? We out here at lunch, boys. I'd rather have the tunes rolling through than the cows with the wave pool generators. I hear you, man. Uh, I appreciate you joining in, Justin Royal. He has now passed me on subs. Congrats, bud. Uh, you have earned it, dude. You hustle. You work for it. Uh, one of these days, I'll get on your level. But I did catch one on the catwalk just for you, just to let you know. Um, I think the people would like to hear you on Bateman Raw, Justin, or join into a, a midday stream. You just got to let me know. I'm going to try to start doing this uh, when I'm up uploading content during the week. So, Yes, I do. Uh, no, a reputable loan provider for used boats. RECLending.com. Uh, check those guys out. They're good people. Um, here's my recommendation on buying a boat. Save your money. Buy one with cash. It sucks. and But if you got to get a loan, don't get no 20, 30-year-old deal. Get what you can afford. You can always upgrade your boat and put nicer stuff on it. Don't put yourself in debt trying to impress somebody over a fifty, sixty thousand dollar boat. Now, if you got the money, if you got them heaters, you got to smoke them. I ain't hating on you if, if you got it, but never, don't put yourself in debt. Uh, that's a lesson I learned at a young age that I'm kind of paying for now. Um, boats are made every day. Uh, your family, your free time, and your credit uh, is not made every day. Uh, you can ruin your credit like that, and it takes forever to build it back up. So, no problem, Clayton. I probably won't be on after you mow the yard. Figure I do do for an hour, but uh, buy what you can afford. Uh, well, if you if you're gonna get one for three years, you probably got pretty decent, you know, score there. So I'm not a credit expert. I can tell you how to kill it. Can't tell you very much how to build it back up, other than make your payments on time, get a secure credit card. And three, don't make a bunch of big purchases. You know, uh, that's one thing Bateman can say. I may not be traveling and making stupid YouTube money. I have no debt. Trucks paid off. Wife's cars paid off. I don't owe nobody nothing. So I'm cool with that. And uh, 
you know, I've been looking at trucks on the car gurus, and I'm just like, you know, that's a really nice truck. And then I see payment, I'm like, no, I'll just fix mine up. You know, you know the super truck Ram has definitely got to get some, uh, it's got to get some new tires. Uh, probably going to put a cow induction hood on it, some other stuff, just to make it look cool. But that's cheaper than buying a brand new one, so. No problem, Terry. Get back to work. Waiting on 5 o'clock. I promise it's 5 o'clock somewhere, so. What's up, David Thomas? Thanks for joining the Midday Bateman stream. So, uh, we're just on here talking, BSing, showing off this Six Cents Vega Frog. These right here, a little ribbit, ribbit action. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff coming in. I'll have more colors of Six Cents Frogs, hopefully today. Uh, so if I stream tomorrow, which I really plan on uploading a Bateman Raw tomorrow, uh, probably about the same time I would start this. So again, the days I don't stream, I'll be uploading content. So uh, I got some comment uh, uh, content Saturday. I only caught two fish. But you know what? Not everybody that goes fishing catches them every time. And I think it's just, I think I'm going to upload the video because there's a lot of Asian carp action. I want you guys to see these carp. Um, dude, me too, Royal. I done spent more of my lunch money on Vega Frogs. And that new, the new swag shirts. I'm right. I love me some t-shirts. I'm not going to lie. Dude, Punisher makes good spinner baits, man. Good spinner baits. I agree. Trying to buy a used champion. About time to upgrade from 87 Skeeter. Dude, the old school Skeeters are good boats. Um, I would love to, If I had $20,000, I would try to find a champion in that price range. Uh, I don't even have 500 right now, so... All right, good question, Midwest Fisherman. What's your favorite non-bass species? Uh, that's a good... I actually, believe it or not, enjoy catching the old, old whiskers. I like a big catfish. I enjoy catching some catfish. Uh, I don't target them very often. I would say it'd be... Uh, now, if you want to go offshore, uh, I loved catching that tarpon, man. I would love to catch some tarpon or bonefish. Uh, never caught a bonefish, but I imagine it'd be fun. So I love fishing offshore, by the way. That's an awesome experience. I'd love to do more of it. But All right, My favorite open water frog, uh, Dean, is actually the jackal gavacho. Um, it walks very, very well. Um, that's my favorite open water frog. I haven't spent enough time with the six cents to, to tell you uh, if it's better. But I can tell you this is a great frog and it walks well. But the gavacho is my personal uh, preference. Uh, River to Sea makes the bully wall too, Stony. Uh, I'm not a big fan of the bully wall. Uh, I don't hook up very good on it. I know some people really, really love it. Kirby, I'm glad you said that. Nathan Smith uh, does make some awesome spinner baits. I, I messaged him on Facebook. I need to get back with him. He makes a good looking uh, table rock shad like color. I did go red fishing. I enjoyed red fishing as well. So, uh, yeah, Gavacho's really good. The old True Tungsten Mad Max uh, walks really, really well. And I'll be honest, man, uh, if you can do it, the Spro Spro is really good. So, what pole reel hook up with that new frog? Uh, I'm going to use a seven three heavy action uh, rod. Uh, 737 Forbes, at least a 7 to 1 and 65 pound braid. And the thing about a frog rod is, man, you just want to have good backbone, but you got to have some soft tip. Got to have a soft tip if you want that thing to walk. If it's too stiff, it ain't going to walk real well. But you got to have that backbone. Ooh. And Jack O'Kara frog's really good. Uh, all the depth stuff. Is really good. This depth slither slither K is an amazing walking frog. My frog box is outside. I, I've got a lot of stuff. I haven't pull, pulled into the bait room right now. So, all right, I'm gonna let you guys know. Uh, there's a couple. Uh, I kind of got. Uh, there was a guy on. Um, a local fishing group that is scamming for Shimano reels. So if you see this guy uh, 
John Combs. If you see this profile of this right here, this guy is uh, scamming the Facebook group for Shimano Reels. So uh, anytime you want to buy stuff online, if they do not take PayPal, I don't mean friends and family. You want to make sure they're sending you an invoice and paying goods and services where they get a percentage out. That's the only way to do it. If they ask for Facebook Pay, Cash App, all that stuff, uh, Venmo. Venmo is okay if you know the person. But, dude, that guy is scamming all kinds of people. He's, he is not sending stuff. As soon as you pay, he blocks you. Um... Cause dude, he had some reels at really good price, so I sent a message and I said, "Man, uh, E7 for a hundred bucks." And he sent me photos of it. And some just didn't add up, so I posted in Shimano group, and all of a sudden people were like, "Dude, this guy's a sc spammer. He's putting that in all kinds of groups." So buyer beware. Just trying to give you all some tips. I've got burned before, uh, and then sometimes you're not getting burned. Not everybody can get to the post office every day, but. Never send friends and family. Always send goods and services. Don't do anything but PayPal. If you have an issue and you pay goods and service on PayPal, you can get your money back. You cannot get it back through Facebook Pay and Cash App and all that stuff. So, just a heads up. But, um, anyway. Eric Riley, did you see where you won the Bateman Summer uh, Box from Six Cents? Uh, I'll, Eric, if you will, email me. I'm going to put it right here. Email me. Email me your address so I can get that out in the next day or two. I'll try. I'm really bad about I'm that guy that waits, you know, procrastinates. But uh, I bought some other stuff earlier. I bought me a couple of night spender baits. Um, yeah, I did the drawing, like, first thing in the video, Eric. Drew you right out of the hat, man. Congratulations fist bump on that get you a little jank juice c10 and some other uh good smoke in there so dude on is a great fisherman good dude so i'm gonna stream for about 15 more minutes you know we'll just try to do an hour stream a day uh i want to give a shout out to justin lucas uh he's been a good guy to me uh probably one of the most humbling uh moments i can remember about three or four years ago my phone rings. It's a weird number. I don't know who it is. I answer it, and it's like, "Hey, bait man, this is Justin Lucas." I'm like, "Whoa," you know. And he just said, "Man, I got a qu couple questions about some baits, and I really expect re respect your opinion and everything." And I figured I'd call you before I called anybody. We talked a little bit about some of the Berkeley top orders and whatnot. And dude, I thought, man, that's pretty cool for Justin Lucas to like want to call me and ask me questions. And uh, dude, he's just hammering the smallmouth. The smallmouth king right now so so shout out to justin for his win that was an awesome tournament by the way uh and what can you say about what can you say about jacob wheeler dude one ounce jacob wheeler is a freaking machine all right jerome have you ever not fished for bass yes um now i know tactical bass and just put out a video uh and basically said well, this is a difference, okay? Um, I used to basically guide at night for smallmouth, largemouth for about two years. Uh, I've tried some off-the-wall stuff. Did not work for me. Um, one thing they did talk about is throwing a crankbait at night. I think a lot of guys don't do that. It does work. Uh, but for me, the oats, the true, steady, short-arm spinnerbait uh, or medium-wire spinnerbait, that's the juice here. Uh, and on most of the TVA lakes, that seemed right. Um, I don't throw a lot of top water at night, but what I do is more of a wake bait. Uh, don't throw a lot of buzz baits at night. Sometimes I do full moons. I like that. Um, but I think, uh, you know, some of the stuff they talk about is good. But that's stuff that I've tried and it didn't work for me. Doesn't say, I'm not saying there's stuff and not listen to them. That's just, I think it's a difference in fisheries. And, um, man, I can tell you some of the stuff that guys throw at night uh, in East Tennessee is way different than what I throw here. Um, you know, some guys like those big one-ounce, biggest blading final spinnerbaits. I like a five or six. I really don't change much from that. Um, but 
short arm spinnerbait Colorado gold or, or, or nickel blade um, and I like you know I keep it simple I like black blue and purple I like a shade of purple and I like a bubble gum and white for full moons uh, and I have caught fish on a double willow spinnerbait at night some really big smallmouth at night but that's kind of a full moon deal for me so well so here's the one negative of throwing treble hook baits at night if you don't got a lot of light on, you will hook yourself, and it will suck. Um, I have not come up with a derby shirt. Uh, and just to let you guys know, my t-shirt store, my Bateman's uh, swag shop, is gone. For some reason, the company, I emailed them, they said, oh, it wasn't very active, and we deleted it. And I said, not very active, I just sold t-shirts two days ago. What the crap? Because I got a new shirt, um, I got and it's good. It's good. I, I'm not gonna put it on here because it might I might get googened if I put the design up here. But but uh, I'm gonna try to at least get a new shirt every month. I'm not trying to make a t-shirt club or anything like that. I'm just I like making cool stuff. And what's up, bait man? I bought a six nine Brian Thrift skipping rod for frogs. Dude, that rod jacks big as. That's a good rod, man. I like the Tatula Elite skipping rod, but I know a lot of guys really like uh, that one as well. All right, well, it is almost 12 o'clock, so I guess I'm going to make a thumbnail or something. Uh, I don't know how many people are watching. Let's see. Uh, not that it matters. 77 people. That's not bad in the middle, middle of the day. I'll take that. Uh, and you can watch the video anytime, but hopefully we'll get some uh, uh, more content and whatnot. No, Victor, I have to rebuild it, which is bogus, but I have all the stuff. So I'm going to get out of here. So that's your midday Bateman stream. If you guys like it, make sure you smash the thumbs up button for me. Leave a comment. Follow me on Instagram. I might have to make an Instagram post about these, but I don't want to spam y'all with six cents posts, but they got so much good stuff. It's hard not to. Guys, y'all have a good one. Peace out. Bateman Raw coming tomorrow. Joe Thomas.